Hi guys, Yaka here. So we're back with the, another achievement video. We want to do the achievements for Rogue, and I have two decks that I suggest you could use to complete the four achievements for Rogue. Uh, going through them, uh, the one deck which you can complete all three of these uh, with is uh, Weapon Rogue. It's uh, very aggressively skewed, uh, so you just need to count the cards, but it's easy enough to discount. And then it's just a matter of you cycling through your deck really fast and playing the cards, which is discounted, and you will get there. I think I did it in one or two tries, so then I managed to tw play all 12 cards in a single turn. Um, Swine Tusk Shank, uh, you need to... Going through the deck is going to be easy enough, but the Nitro Boost Poison was nerfed at some point, and I actually had to craft mine again in order for me to complete this quest. Uh, it's, I don't know if you want to do this, but it is a necessity if you want to go through and complete this achievement as well. The last one you can complete with the first deck that will go through uh, is uh, Identity Theft. Uh, you need to use the spell Yoink, and then steal or discover all 10 hero powers. I've seen some discussion on Reddit and some threads, forums and stuff like that because the 10th hero power would be your own. Um, for some reason, and I don't know why, uh, I actually did not have... That was not the one that I was missing towards the end. I had 9 hero powers and then I was thinking, well, now I need to uh, find another hero power and find another yoink and replace that hero power with the rogue one uh, because then you would be able to get the 10 hero powers but apparently i maybe had an oh my yog generating a yoink and getting the rogue hero power or something like that because it doesn't have to be class specific you don't have to play the rogue you just have to find it out of yoink um so I don't know, uh, maybe it's fixed so you don't actually only have to get the 9 hero powers or uh, maybe you need to do the other way around where I said it. There's been some suggestions also to do it in wild where you can convert your hero power into something else and then use your ink to find the rogue one. Um, it's up to you but it is possible to do. Uh, it's just the last one is probably going to be a bit of a challenge. But keep track of the ones that you completed and then this should be easy enough to do. So that was the first deck I'll show you guys. I'll show you the deck, show a bit of the gameplay. And then after that, and of course there will be deck codes in the description. After that I'll show you the final one, which is not that great. And I tanked a lot of uh, ranks doing this. So you need to figure out if you want to do this. But the deck I use is a little bit low, 50%. Um, but what you want to do is that you want to find your Shroud of Concealment. You have a deck revolving around that. It is kind of a secret rogue. And funny enough, it, the most easy matches for me has been against control decks like Control Warrior. Because grinding a lot of value out of the secrets you get from um, uh, Hanar is, is really amazing. Um, so those are actually the ones, the slower matchups. This deck is actually fine there. Um, but I'll show you the deck as well, and it's just a matter of using concealment to find minions, and there's a bunch of other stealth minions in there, but it doesn't really matter as long as you draw it from concealment, uh, Shroud of Concealment, then even if you play a stealth minion, it still counts towards the progression of the achievement. It's worth noting. So don't hold yourself back whenever you draw stealth minions, just throw them out on the board and even though they're permanently stealth until you attack with them uh, it'll still progress the quest. So that'll be the last deck I'll show. Let's head on into the first one so you can see how this deck actually performs. So the first deck is the Weapon Rogue. It's a really aggressive build. Um, what you want to go for here is maybe you want to keep Yoink just to progress the achievement or else if you want to Played as a competitively viable deck, what you want to do on full mulligan for each and every time is the Swine Tusk Shank, because that's really the win condition out of the deck. Um, alternatively, or maybe in conjunction with, um, usually I don't throw back the efficient Octobot. So those are kind of the cards that I keep. I look for Swine Tusk uh, Shank and the efficient Octobot. Uh, the efficient Octobot is not completely necessary to pull off the 12 cards 
played in a single turn, but it is definitely going to make it a little bit easier. Um, and on top of that, just getting that mana discount on a hand, that's really great. Um, that's only thing to say about that. Just draw a bunch of cards, play a lot of cards, hit your opponent in the face with a buffed up Swine Tusk Chank, and be very sad if your opponent has a news, and move on to the next match. So let's have a look at the deck, how it actually performs on ladder. The forest fights back. Remember my blade. Right, so I've got the swine tusk. So it is a matter of getting some other stuff and some poisons for it. Backstep against druid. I don't actually need it. Do it. So I just want to get some poisons. Maybe also an efficient octo octobot. Poisons. There we go. So I can yoink on turn one. Maybe get some card draw. Demon claws. Fire blast. Just fire blast. We are an aggressive deck, so it's a matter of us just going face a lot. But be aware that you need to yoink through all the different terror powers. So you need to, even though it's suboptimal at some point, you need to make sure that you pick all of them. So let's just do it like so. We can swing because we do have a lot of some other poisons ready. We can do that in conjunction with Swindle. If it's just damage, then it's deadly poison. If I need to do a trade for some reason, probably not against Druid, then it would be paralytic. That's overgrowth. Or a minion, actually. Is that it? Harbor up, okay. Then it's paralytic. Knocked. Expect that. Let's see what we get here. Efficient octopus. That's nice. Cold, sharp, that's actually a token spell token druid. Seems like it anyway. I think they have some merged list at this point in time. Deficient Octobot. Deficient is sufficient. I think I need to drop the silver leaf on there. Initiating overdrive. Over the deadly as well. Cold shot. We just as well keep it on the hand, just in case that he has some kind of weapon removal. Unexpectedly. So the back step I can use either to activate a combo or trying to get those 12 cards cast. But this time I'm going to drop the deadly poison as well because I need to keep my uh, charges, my durability on the weapon. I need to keep that up. So I'm going to drop the Deadly Poison before I drop the Secret Passage. I think that's going to be the play, and then I can use the minions to trade. Challenge is I need to have the Nitro Boost Poison uh, corrupted, and that is it's not super difficult to do. But it is something... Maybe I can actually do this here. Care to make a way to your friend. We just wait a little bit with the secret passage. There we go. So now I need. I am going to swing. See what we draw. Cold sharp steel. Let's see what we draw. 
gen, this deck could corrupt it on the next turn. But let's try and use the secret passage. See if we can find some more card draw. Backstab's not gonna do anything. Prep. Okay, and use the oink. Just get some, getting some damage out there. Life tap, I guess that's fine. An Octobot? Don't mind if I do. Because then the hand that I get back has the potential to be really cheap. Could actually go for the Jandis and Night's Boost. That's the last one, right? Plus one attack, Silver Leaf, and Deadly. And I only miss the Night's Boost. And if I can damage, get the Frenzy effect off. Seems like it's gonna be Guardian Animals, so I guess not. Okay. Might be a chance. And that was not. <laughs> but we can do this anyway. I uh, guess we can card draw. Paralytic, so we can hit into that one if we need to. But we can preparation. Drop Jandis, and then Magic Boost is corrupted, and then we actually get to do it. Uh, let's go for this one. And there we go. Make it double. Cold, sharp steel. A bit of cards. Wicked stab. Now we just need to push a bit of damage. It is difficult for him, so Graybo is likely gonna stick in some kind of capacity. So now we completed actually one of the achievements there. That's a bit tricky. Could you please behave, man? Maybe I get there anyway. It's like 5, 12. Yes, we get there. There we go. And we managed to get there. The last deck, uh, I named this a Shroud Rogue, uh, but it could just as well be Secret Rogue, because uh, the one of the major win conditions in here is the Shadow Jewel of Hanar. Um, but what you want to keep in the mulligan, uh, of course, sometimes you just want to progress the quest as soon as possible, so you can choose to keep a Shroud of Concealment. However, what I really would like to do when I'm uh, starting up, when what I do, want to do a mulligan for, I always want to keep my Great Heart Sage because you want to get through some card draw. You want to find the cards necessary to to finish off your opponent, and also remember to keep uh, your Spy Mistress or your uh, sneaky delinquents because those will be activators for a great hot sage so you really want to find that one and then keep your cheap uh, stealth minions as well other than that it's a matter of you trying to survive and trying to get sneak in some damage maybe peek some damage output with the cold blood and see if you can get some really valuable turns with shadow jewel or hanar and uh, you will win some games but it's not the best deck for climbing as it is right now but let's have a look at the deck in action, so you can see how to play it. Valera versus Valera. Watch your. Uh, this is not going to be Remember the best of play. matchups. It's simply too fast. The other rooks. One go mulligan for Greyheart and some stealth minions. Happy Midsummer. Greetings, greetings. Happy Midsummer. 
useful. That's a stealth minion. I think Blade Master Samuro is a good to keep against a field contact board. Okay, let's do this. It's really incredible. Wow. Being my folly, I have so chaos. Okay, what are we going for here? Could just as well throw that one back. I guess that's fine. It's all about the tempo right now. I'm gonna go for infiltrate the Lillian. It's gonna be interesting to see what uh, he's gotten out of the, the uh, druid. And what? I think this is actually worth the Samuro already. Honestly speaking. Because I don't want to take that much damage. There we go. Alternatively, I could have used, used Infiltrator Lillian. Okay, that's gonna be the turn. Well, I guess more or less. And then we are just gonna. Okay, that's good for the next turn. Lillian and the Spy Mistress. My board is stronger, I have more life. He has card advantage. Seems like it's a slowish turn. Ish, it's a bit damage. But Jandis, if that's good. Just mm, a little face here. Jandis first. What makes sense? See what we get. Mm -hmm. well, that's an easy choice. I don't want this one to die. <laughs> Uh, nice. I didn't even get to play the Shroud of Concealment, but it actually works against, uh, uh, even though your minions are also stealthed. So, you will get there eventually, even though it takes a bit of time. 